Hi, I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugar Works, and today I'm gonna to walk you guys through how to do ruching with the sugar shapers. So what I have here, you see I've already gotten started, so you can see a little bit of the finished product, but this isn't straight fondant. This is a mix of five part fondant to one part modeling chocolate. You want the modeling chocolate in there because it'll give you more work time. It won't elephant skin as quickly. And it just kind of makes it a lot easier to do, to do this and to take your time and actually get it right and to work it the way you want. If you're using a fondant such as Fondorific or any other fondant that might already have modeling chocolate in it, you don't need to do the ratio. You can just use that straight. And so I'm using a mix of all four of my shapers for this. I've got a couple of my mini smalls, my orange, my purple, and my red. I've got my orange and my purple of my full size soft. And then I've got my red and my blue of my minis firms and then my red full size firm. I'm using the mix for different things. With this, you want a bunch of different te textures and so I need some subtlety. So I'm using my firms mostly to do like the really deep creases that you see there. The minis I go in when it's like a tight space that I can't quite fit my full size tool in or when I want to do something really close together. And then going in for the softs, it does more of the soft fabric pleating and the buckling, not so much the hard like edge. So I'm just gonna kind of keep going and explain what I'm doing here. So for all of these lines I've got marked out on the bottom, I used my mini hard, just so I can go and have trace out the direction I want my ruching to go. From after you done with that, I will go in with my full size firm red to lay in those really deep textures. Once again, I've got a mixture of milk and vodka here that I'm using to lubricate underneath my tool. You don't want to go at it just dry when you're embossing deeply like this because it will kind of feather a little bit. And so you see I'm laying my tool on its side like that to really kind of puff up one side and to flatten another. And you could do this with the softs. Um, it just takes a lot more passes and they're a little bit wibbly, wibbly wobbly, it's a very technical term. They just don't get as clean of a line the first time you go through, so that's why I prefer to use the firms for this. So you see, just kind of going in, pulling out the different directions. And the thickness of this fondant is just over an eighth of an inch thick. You're really, fabric pleating is really not as deep as you think it is. I always tell people, I'm like, it's not as much as you want it to be. It's just a little bit. If you go too deep, it starts to look very unnatural. So you don't need to have insanely thick fondant to do this. A lot of people think it's like a quarter inch thick. I'm like, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's maybe like two or three millimeters over what I would normally roll. So it's about four, four to five millimeters or a little, un, a little over an eighth of an inch. So you can see how I'm starting to get that like actual texture. And it, if you run your hand over it, you'll be like, oh wow, it feels like folds. And because we're using the milk and the vodka, the, any liquid that I put on the cake is gonna dry matte. If you're using water on this or um, just straight vodka, you'll get a little bit of a shine, which isn't a bad thing if you decide to go over it with luster dust to really bring out all the textures, but I wanted to leave this matte if I could, so I'm trying to use something that'll dry matte. So I would say with this, with the fondant and chocolate blend, you have about an hour to work on it. If you need more time, you can always um, put a little bit of uh, white fat on it. We'll sometimes bring it back, but I say to kind of work, don't work rushed, but work quickly. And so you see, you just kind of keep going with that. Oops. The hard part is not to miss your line if you go back the other direction. 
Sometimes I'll switch directions just to smooth it back out and that's when you don't want to do things like that. Usually with this fondant and chocolate blend, you can actually blend a lot of that out if you make the mistake of missing your line. But remember, it's fabric. It's not going to be perfect and it kind of ruches in its own way. You can always use the pad of your thumb to kind of smooth out anything that is maybe puckering too much. So from here, you can go in and use your mini red firm to kind of tuck in any areas near seams or near the edge of the cake. Any place that your large shaper wasn't quite fitting. Around the edges like this, like right into this deep corner that I want to make. such just to get some deeper ridges. The next one I'll go in with is my large orange because that's how I get kind of like that puffed look to the pleats. And with this one, it's kind of, I always start on the top edge where it's like the fabric would be folding over itself because there's always just a little bit of a divot. So you see I'm just wetting the tip in very lightly, just kind of running it all the way down to the base. Do I need to tell them to be quiet? So you see, I'm just kind of using this guy to get that little kind of pillowy soft pleat. And you can kind of keep going in and adding it where you want. I tend to just find it on the top. That's where I want it. You can also, if you want to soften that other edge, almost using it like an eraser back and forth. Just like that. And then once again, going in with the minis is when I get closer to this area where everything is so tight and I can't fit in my bigger head size. But I'm using the softs here because I don't want to leave as much as an impression. I want it to be kind of a light, gentle impression on there. The last one I would use would be the purple, which is the lip chisel. And I like this one because it's got that perfect shape and it kind of will soften the inside of the ripple just to finish them off and kind of pull them out a little bit. So I'll take it with the cup side down into the fabric pleat. And I'm just kind of running it along the edge and it just gives it that final little bit of puff that I think makes it look a lot like fabric. It just kind of pulls and deepens everything you've already done, but gives it a nice finish. So it's not quite so sharp. And with ruching, there's all sorts of different pleats you can do. You can do, this is a fan pleat where they're all going the same direction. You could do a box pleat where they kind of fold on opposite sides and go back and forth. It's all about kind of playing with your shapers and seeing what you like to do. So I'm gonna keep working on this and finishing it up, but that should give you guys a pretty good idea on how to use your sugar shapers to ruche a cake to get that fabric appearance. Please feel free to check out our YouTube page for some other really awesome tutorials on how to use all of our tools, including the shapers, the smoothers, anything else you might want. And happy caking.